Yo, what up? Hey, Benny. Getting some sun. I think I'm gonna rent a car and go on a big road trip and just film as much pranks as I can in January while I don't have rent. <clears throat> Live in motels pretty much. And um, maybe get Chad to come with me, that would be dope. I've been getting into green tea. It's a lot better than coffee. It's kind of a cleaner high. <laughs> I mean like, not high, like wakefulness. Like, and there's less, there's more antioxidants and it doesn't make your teeth yellow. Green tea. <laughs> It's not, it's more of like a gradual energy than a spiky coffee, the way coffee is. It doesn't give you headaches either, so that's nice. Holler, holler. I put uh, both the couches on Craigslist. The TV stand, my electric skateboard malfunctioning. And that bass, guitar, and uh, I just put everything's free. And ten minutes later, like, my phone just blew up. Like, it was like, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> so I, I just saved the first people for the, each item. And um, took it down, like, after 20 minutes. Rented a U-Haul for Sunday and a little storage unit 100 bucks for the month and uh, I'm just gonna put all my stuff in there for the month maybe rent a car and go on a little road trip just stack them up stack fat stacks check after check checking off my checklist Mm. Put the ramp back up and I got another kid coming. Hopefully he doesn't fail me like the last one. <sighs> one another, and one kid was just like, what is left of the ramp? I am only interested if complete. And I kind of wanted to text back like, um, don't worry about it, bud. Or something snotty. But... I've been starting to lose my voice and coughing a lot, so I'm, I'm going to just stop vaping for now. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was very random. I just, I don't know. I just started vaping for the last month or two. It feels good. Someone asked about growing up Mormon and to talk about the transition period of kind of going inactive because he's Mormon himself and he's stressed out because he doesn't like going to the church and he's never felt the spirit. <laughs> the spirit is like this, this, uh, you know, there's like a notion where you, you pray and to, you pray to God to ask if, uh, this is true to see for yourself, you know, which is kind of flawed because it is true, like the wisdom in it's true, but not necessarily the dogma of it. So it's like, oh yeah, being honest is true. So it's like, oh, the church is true. But <laughs> yeah, um, in my opinion, if you don't like going to church, then don't go to church. And I, I'm pretty sure I would have been more miserable if I stayed Mormon. It's kind of hard when you have the pressure of your parents though and you're that young and uh, you don't want to let them down. There's definitely say like around 18, 19, you know, where you're, when you're supposed to go on a mission. They, <laughs> they all think, like everyone's 
parents think like if you just if you just get them on their mission then they're they're set like they're they'll have a testimony which just means they have a strong belief in the church and they'll be grounded and stable i guess the rest of their life <laughs> but plenty of return missionaries go inactive and so it's silly but yeah so when i was 18 or 19 i started to read books like i actually read mormonism is for dumb or mormonism for dummies and the book of mormon and um a marvelous work in wonder and uh and just a lot of uh religious books too like buddhism is for dummies and muslim islam is for dummies and i just kind of started like realizing that just organized religion is is it's just voluntary you don't have to be die hard about it and it's not and i don't want to god <laughs> if god if there is a god i don't want him to require me to have faith in him where if I get to the end and I die and he's like oh you didn't accept Jesus and you didn't have faith in me so you're gonna go to hell <laughs> like I then so be it then I don't I don't want that to be my God anyway then you know I don't want to fear God <sighs> so to add to that though I think we do I don't think there's a heaven or a hell. I think we kind of just create our own states. Kind of like crime and punishment. The, <laughs> the um, again, I haven't read this. It's just the spark notes, but the main gist of it is you. He, without going to jail, he created his own punishment from guilt, and because he, he, he's a murderer in the beginning, and he's hiding it the whole time, and. That's the gist of it, is you, you create, and is like thinking and your ego and overcoming the ego. His ego kind of made him feel isolated from everyone. He thought he was better than everyone and above everything else. So he, was, he murdered someone and the whole time he was keeping it secret and hiding in it he kind of created this own hell for himself that way and then he, when he finally did confess and go to jail he kind of realized that he loved this one girl and then um... and that was bad <laughs> and he was in jail by then and so he, he, I don't know, he created his own hell, you know? I'm not an authority on it, but yeah, that's what I wanted to say about that. Uh, and on top of that, it makes me wonder if depression and anxiety are states that we cause sometimes from our own actions, like partying and whatever, pretty much yeah, and just our decisions, you know, and then, so it's like we're living in uh, from the consequences of those decisions. For example, me drinking a lot in college or smoking weed or something gave me depression. So now I'm suffering the consequences of that. And now that's the, the, that's the punishment and the sin manifesting itself. <laughs> I don't know. Or if you... That's not like something to feel really guilty about. Say you like... You you rob a bank, then you... Then you feel bad about it, but... I don't know. I don't... I think there's... I think there's psychopaths and sociopaths that just don't feel anything, you know? They're like totally carnal and evil.
Bonnie, chill. <laughs> and they don't feel bad after killing and that's, yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's ramblings. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, back to the Mormon thing. Uh, yeah, so there's definitely like two or three years of, you know, my mom crying a lot and just, you know, feeling scared for me, I guess. Not scared, just like sad and frustrated that I didn't want to go to church and et cetera. And my dad getting frustrated and upset with me. And, and that was hard. You don't want to, I mean, no one wants to let down their parents, but it was like, it was a pretty big decision. Like I had to just let them know how I felt about it and move on with my life. But luckily they weren't, they're cool now. Like it's not a thing at all. Like they, we just don't really talk about it. We sometimes even joke about it. Like, I don't know, I'm trying to give an example. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't know, we're still a happy family, that's all I can, I mean, it's not awkward at all. <laughs> but I do have some friends where it is awkward for them, and they they have to, like their, yeah, like their parents definitely still kind of resent them or whatever, and But that's like across all, re I mean, religions, and you know, that's not an exclusively Mormon thing. Um, I remember this one time, I even, see, in high school, I told the bishop that I confessed my sins to, I told him that I was jerking off the porn, because I was... I, I don't know, I've always been honest, I can't just lie. And at that point I was pretty much just didn't care about the church at all, but I was still going because I was under my parents' roof and I was 17, I was about to graduate high school. And I saw, I was seeing the bishop and he's like, so how's your pornography addiction? <laughs> and I I didn't think of it as an addiction, I, I didn't think of it as a problem at all, but he did. And so I had to see him like every week for a certain time. and. And I just kept like, uh, yes, I, I looked at porn this week. And like, he's like, all right, well, what, I mean, I think the next steps are we should talk, you should talk to your parents. And I remember I just, I should talk to my parents, but <laughs> next thing I know, the next Sunday, he has my parents in the room. <laughs> and I didn't know he was going to do this. Or <laughs> I wasn't aware. He might have said like, I, don't, I really don't remember him saying, we're going to have your parents in next week. So I, I come in there, and they're there, and so it's like a, it's, all, it's like a intervention ambush. <laughs> and he's just like, yes, Andrew has a problem with pornography. And it wasn't even, it, that sounds so awkward, but it wasn't even that awkward for some reason. And my dad's just like, yeah, I knew, yeah, we shouldn't have let him have his own laptop. Because I, I had bought in my first laptop that year. Yeah, that was like, it was more than 10 years ago now. Or no, that was like exactly 10 years ago. Dang. About nine, nine and a half years ago. Dang. Ah. <sighs> All right. Um. Are you my baby? Are you my baby? So yeah, that's my story of leaving the church. It sounds so bad. It sounds anti, but it's not. I feel like it's like a new world now, though. Back in 2007, like, that would have been 
just like way intense for my family but now it's it's like my generation is a lot more laid back about it and a little more live and let live so just kind of a new world